is Zack Snyder's Justice League better than the 2017 version? I will get to the bottom of this as I discuss this with my slightly skinnier self from the past. Let me explain. Smart that's right. Welcome to the objective review of Zack Snyder's Justice League. And in the objective review, I break a movie down into six categories and assign weight to them, depending on the genres, to have the most honest, unbiased, objective review as possible. And this is a pretty special video. This is going to be kind of a verse match video, not only between the 2017 version of Justice League and Zack Snyder's version, but my own thoughts from the past. All right, let's just start with the first category of story. Just League. Just League is kind of your stereotypical superhero movie. It's really liking that to the Avengers. Pretty much aliens attack, our heroes stop them. Just League has a lot of exposition in it. Um, <laughs> so much that it kind of weighs down the story. The story already wasn't that strong to begin with. So for plot and story aspect of the movie, I had to give it a six and a half out of ten. This is another area where I feel like Snyder Cut really improved on. The story really just increased the stakes in this one. So they, they brought in a lot more cyborg scenes, which really added this very human depth and character to it. I feel like there's a lot more deeper meaning in this movie than there was in the Whedon cut. Steppenwolf also has much better motives this time around. He almost seems, you almost feel for him a little bit. You feel sorry for him. You know he kind of wants to get home, gets back to Dark Side's side. So one of the other things I really loved about the story was the emphasis on kind of the history of the world. You know, they talk about the age of heroes and how humanity stood together, how Earth's mightiest forces stood together to face dark side. Kind of get the implication that that hasn't been that way since, that we never thought that mankind would come together. So much of the story is Bruce Wayne really bringing this team together. You feel like that was kind of lost on the Whedon cut. So the story gets an eight out of 10. This is on to emotion. Um, and just sleep. I would say it really doesn't have all that much heart. I was looking more for the heart and the emotion in there, but it's still serviceable enough that I would give it a seven out of 10. So for the most part, I think I'm correct with the Whedon cut. There really wasn't that much heart. In retrospect, I would have given that a six and a half out of 10, not the seven. I do think the Snyder cut has way more heart in it. This is one of the biggest areas of improvement. You got way more heart with Cyborg. Really, a lot of the story is focused in around Cyborg and how he's just kind of lost and trying to figure himself out. And even in the Whedon cut, the Superman stuff, I think was really good, but Snyder takes it to a whole nother level. And the thing about the emotion in the Snyder cut is that it feels far more genuine. This whole film feels far more genuine. I do think there's still a little bit more room for improvement. So the Snyder cut gets an eight and a half out of 10 here. This is on to action. Really Wonder Woman, I think delivers the most of that. Wonder Woman has a fight with Steppenwolf, which is just really great to see because Wonder Woman's strong. Uh, but not only that, she's a great hand-to-hand -hand combatant. And then Batman's action is great on the Batmobile. The Flash, seeing him use the Speed Force, is just as good as watching the TV show. Action, I give it a 9 out of 10 on a 20% weight. So for the most part, I think the action is relatively the same. Kind of just depends on your taste. The action in the Snyder Cut is far more grounded, far more lethal. Packs a little bigger of a punch. And I really enjoy that. Also, they seem to be longer action sequences, which almost makes me mad at Whedon for cutting it. Like, you can tell he was just so pressured to cut the film down as much as possible. So action was already high in the Whedon cut, and the Snyder cut takes it up just a little notch, so get nine and a half out of 10 on that. That's just on to comedy. Well, let me tell you, surprisingly, Justice League has a lot of comedy in it. So for comedy, the great act of Justice League would be a seven and a half. It's, uh, it's not as funny as a comedy, it's not even close, but it's the funniest DC movie I've ever seen. My skin yourself here is absolutely correct. This is one thing that Josh Whedon actually did better than Snyder in this film, and that was the comedy. He provided a lot more lighter of tone, a lot more jokes, a lot more Whedonisms, and you can tell that's really where a lot of the reshoots took place. So in Zack Snyder's Justice League, they don't have the joke about Aquaman with the lasso of truth. It doesn't have the Wally versus, not Wally, Barry Allen versus Superman Rays. There are just a lot of other jokes that don't come in there because those jokes honestly don't fit the tone of the Snyder movies. The joke and the Snyder cut are fine. They're few and far in between, but they're not, they're not that great. They don't stand out. So for comedy, for the Snyder cut, it gets a six and a half out of 10. In this movie, no one's gonna win an Oscar in this movie. No one's having to stretch their acting ability at all. It's kind of just people getting into the roles and doing what they need to do. Uh, the serviceable, and for serviceable, 
I'd give a seven out of 10. In hindsight, I don't think I would have given this a seven. I would give probably get a six and a half. It was serviceable enough, but compared to the Snyder Cut, I think it really suffers. And I think part of that comes in a lot of the reshoots. I think the acting in the Snyder Cut is a lot better, which is weird to say because we didn't got all, pretty much all the footage, but he just cuts so much of it and did reshoots that that really hindered the film. You know, when I think about good acting, I think about actors really believing themselves to be that character. And I feel like in those original cuts compared to the Whedon cut, the acting was done so much better. It feels so much more genuine. But a couple highlights, Ray Fisher as Cyborg, he did a great job. Uh, Henry Cavill as Superman, I'm really gonna miss him. He really needs to come back. I think he does a really good, um, kind of understated, yeah, understated service of Superman. And I think when it comes to the weeding cut, they just come off a lot more cheesy. So I think it's an eight out of 10. Next is on to directing. I think the first 20 minutes of this movie are bad. There is an opening scene um, where they just play this music and it's kind of a monologue. I'm just like, why are they playing this song right now? Then it kind of wants to introduce you to all the new characters and so it kind of jumps around in the first 20 minutes. And in this movie, you have a new score or an old score, depending on how you look at it, Manny Elfman, and directing a seven and a half out of 10. This is absolutely, of course, one of the biggest differences. And I think when it comes to directing, it really comes down to tone. These are two completely different directors with two completely different tones. Like this, this Whedon cut almost feels like the baby kindergarten version of Justice League. And that's sad to say, like, I don't know if Josh Whedon is gonna get another job in Hollywood. Because I don't know how you're given that cut of Justice League. You come away with the 2017 version. I don't see how you had all that footage and you came away with that. Like that's, it's a terrible job done. The really good thing about this movie being extended is that you really feel deep in the trenches with these characters. You really feel the loss of Superman because you're, you're kind of with them for this such a long period of time without him. And so when he comes back, you feel that joy. The CGI was another huge improvement here. I mean, Steppenwolf, I wasn't like, when it comes to character designs, I was like, yeah, the first Steppenwolf looks fine. Like I have a pop of it. Like it was, it was like, whatever, it's fine. And then I saw the spiky Steppenwolf, I'm, you know, the pictures of him, like, all right, yeah, he looks, he looks cooler. But when you see him in the movie, he looks amazing. He steals, his, he steals the eye of the camera. He steals your eye. Like, and they just move a little bit here and there. And then you can get lost in Steppenwolf's eyes. I don't know why, but the CGI is really great. Like, he has like really beautiful eyes. I don't know what to tell you. And the score in the Snyder Cut is far more fitting. I think, you know, they bring about the Superman theme, bring about the Wonder Woman theme. It just, it fits these characters so well. And unlike in the Whedon Cut, where it just feels like a, a greatest hits of DC characters. Again, the pacing I think was really well, especially for a four hour movie. Now there was stuff at the end there where I felt like you could just cut that out. There's a scene of like some girl singing to Aquaman. It, it makes no sense to me right now. Like this would have been a really great three hour and 20 minute movie. It's like you're directing a nine. And the numbers come out to be 7.6 out of 10, so it's not bad. And that brings the weighted average score to an 8.5 out of 10, which that's a, a great score. Some of my favorite superhero films are you know, that high of a score. So let me know what you think of the Whedon versus the Snyder Cut and uh, anything else. So if you guys like this video, please like, comment, and consider subscribing. And sincerely, thank you for watching. I'm out.